Hi and welcome to the October episode of Mad About Gardening. This episode is all about bulb planting, so you're in for a treat. It's going to be really exciting this one. The first project we have today is planting this beautiful tin container with some stunning spring bulbs. It's going to be a really exciting episode because I absolutely love this container and Paul found it. We were out somewhere and how much did you pay for this? This was reduced in the half price it was, so it worked out just under £10. Which is a bargain so for something like that. So we saw it and thought we've got to, we've got to get it. How mu well how much would you normally pay for something like that? I think this was just under £20 originally. Right, so... But obviously I won't pay that much for a, for a no, no, container. No, no, because if you look around you can find things that are reduced. Just wait for the right time of year or go to the right places yeah. and you'll pick up something quite easily. Yes. So this beautiful tin container <coughs> is going to be filled with some beautiful spring bulbs. And first of all, we did have a really bad issue with a lot of the bulbs we planted last year. It was shocking. Over winter. It was shocking. Hardly anything came up at all. We were very disappointed. It was just like, even was when so you went to the bulbs, they were just soggy. Mm. And we didn't have a very good display. No, so to try awful. and remedy that this year, I prepared a very free draining mix of compost. We've added lots of perlite to this multi-purpose compost and we've add, also added lots of grit. So we're hoping this time round this mix will be so free draining that they've got no chance of rotting off if we do get a lot of rainfall. So I'm going to firstly start just by doing a layer of this compost mix. I like this mix. I think it's going to be a heck of a lot better than last year's because what happened last year was just heartbreaking because the thing is you spend all this money on bulbs you know you're really excited you're looking forward to them and I think from what I can remember so many people have said to us that the bulbs did not do very well so it's not just us it's because of all the rain that we had it was a particularly bad wet it's a bad time so I'm just putting a layer of compost in this tin and I'm firstly going to start off with the daffodils so this is a variety called Cragford and it has these lovely like ivory white petals with a very beautiful orange centre. So this is going to be a really good stunner to place. I tend to like the ones with the orange centres I always did as a child. I always used to like those. They are nice. Mm. So I'm just placing these in. And I'm just spacing these so that we have just this central area just free for the time being because that's where the hyacinths are going to go. So that looks brilliant. So next Andrew can get on with planting the hyacinths. I've been really excited about these. This is a variety called Gypsy Queen and they are a really lovely apricot colour. I absolutely adore them and they're going to look fantastic with the white of the daffodils so these will look stunning yeah and that orange center we're hoping is going to go beautiful with this kind of color it will do in the hyacinths as well so it will do very much combination so. great combination an award-winning combination in fact so i'm going to pop these in and what i'm going to do is place them in the spaces where paul has left blank for me so paul's left some areas there just of soil around the daffodils and I'm going to utilize that by planting these four bulbs in those spaces. Now in this pack, obviously there are four, but this these were $3.99 and that's pretty much a standard price standard across price. the board, isn't it? Unless you get something really, really fancy and they're sold separate. Tends to be around that price, doesn't it? Yeah. $3.99, $4.99. Yep. 
So I'm going to place these in. Open the bag properly. And the reason we're not layering these as you would normally is because this pot is quite shallow yeah. in terms of if you were to do like a layered pot of bulbs, you would normally try and choose a very tall pot. Because this is quite shallow, what we didn't want is to have the daffodil bulbs sat underneath, right underneath the, the hyacinth bulb, because that doesn't give the hyacinth bulb anywhere to go yeah. in terms of root. And while the daffodil may move around and get around the bulb of the hyacinth, because of the issue we do have with a lot of the wet weather during winter, what we didn't want to do is kind of cram that in too much. We want yeah. to give it a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room, so that the water that does come can drain freely and it's not being sat upon with the, the daffodil right underneath. So that's brilliant. Because I think that happened to so many people, didn't it? Yeah. You know, we've heard so many people say that they lost the bulbs and this is just... So I've just got a few more. Now there's a few Damage more limitation. I'll just pop them in around oh, the yeah. edge. Good idea. Good idea. Just so we're not wasting any. I didn't realise there was actually any more left oh, in the back, so you, you thought I had. So at this ahead. point, if you can see, that is how the bulbs look. So we've got the daffodils around the edges and near the centre and those hyacinth bulbs, giving their own little bit of space so they can come up without anything directly below them. And I think that's a piece of art in itself. It's lovely, really. isn't it? It looks beautiful. And when you're doing these daffodils, do make sure you give them a bit of a squeeze all these bulbs because if they do feel squidgy or spongy never use them don't use them discard them because they're not going to produce any flowers from them they're just going to end up rotting away with them all in let's get another layer of this lovely compost mix over the top so when paul's done this layer we have some lush flowering mixed crocuses to go in they're your favorite aren't and they? they are my all-time favorite when i was a little boy in my mum and dad's terraced house at the front one of my earliest memories uh, of plants at mum and dad's garden at the front was certainly crocuses. They had a huge patch in a very small border. It's a very small front garden, but a, a huge patch of crocuses, a huge plot that had been there for many, many years. And I think they were there long before mum and dad moved into the house. I'm not sure because they were there all the time and I absolutely love them. And crocuses, it took years and years for me to realize that they actually are scented. Mm. I really didn't know until one day, um, we lived in Sheffield at the time and I was walking to the, the hospital, to so Northern General where we both worked. Mm. And at that point I was walking along and I just caught sight of these crocuses growing at the front of someone's garden. It was actually in front of the fence, actually. So on the outskirts of the garden, these crocuses were growing. They had a little patch at the front of the fence uh, near to the pavement. And I bent down and I just appreciated for the first time the scent of crocuses. And ever since then, I've been well and truly yeah. hooked. So these are really nice. I like the mix. We've, we have a mix. We've grown all kinds in the past. We've grown, I remember in Sheffield, we grew one called Dorothy. Dorothy's a lovely one. And Dorothy's a lovely yeah. one. Paul's mum was called Dorothy. Yeah, we got that for her, didn't we? Really? We, did, we did get that for her. And that was many years ago. And it grew really, really well. That and was a, yellow, nice. a nice yellow crocus, that one, Dorothy. So these are white, there's yellow, there's striped, there's purple. There's a whole mix. But I really love that Dorothy one that we grew. It was but nice. I wanted a mix. I wanted it to be like it was outside mum and dad's front door. I wanted it to be like that. I wanted to try to recreate the same emotions. What better way to do it than this, in this lovely container? There's nothing like trying to recreate childhood memories of planting that you remember from back then. Now, crocus bulbs, as many of you will already know, are very small they're quite small bulbs they're not like the daffodils and certainly not like the hyacinths that are really big bulbs these quite are very small. small and hence the reason why they're going on the surface well they're not going on the surface they're going just below the surface and i'm going to plant these by the time we build the soil level up so it's going to be they're going to be about that deep really yeah. i'd say about that deep about three three times they're on the depth yeah about three the times the depth really that's usually the real so a bit that's like that. fine. Yeah, yeah so these are going to go in and I do wish now I would have got a bigger bag. I think I should have got a slightly larger bag, but I think this, this is enough. I really do. And they got planted with the pointy side upwards. Pointy side up. I always a, remember that. There's a bad one there. I can see a bad one. 
Ooh. Yeah. Now this is an example of a baddie. I'm gonna to come to you because it's all squidgy. It's all squidgy. And that's that's not what we want. So I'm gonna discard those. Discard that one. Because if you plant that, quite simply, it's not gonna do anything. It's and if it does be... have any kind of fungus infection or something in it, that could spread to the other bulbs yep. and spoil the whole display. So, so, so chances are, you know, it's wipe out for bulbs. You're just gonna lose your bulbs. I'm gonna check that one. Always better as well. I know I, I can do it by sight. You know when something looks bad, you know, with experience, but sometimes it is better probably to check every single one, like this one. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is that on the verge? That's on the verge. Right. That's starting to. That's starting. It. That's going to have to go as well. So, a little disappointing. I think quite often it can be as well storage wherever you've bought them from yeah. as well. That's a huge issue when you've got plant centres and nurseries and garden centres and they're, they're storing things, storing bulbs in inappropriate places. That's everything. Yeah. So that's the, that's the whole lot, and that's how they're going to look eventually. So let's get another layer of compost. Get another layer top. of compost. But yeah, you, you find, I mean, I went into somewhere one day and they were selling, I think it was back in Sheffield, back in the day, a long time ago, when we lived there. And I'd gone in and it was just such a horrendously hot summer. And I remember they were there in this greenhouse. And I'm thinking, this is not good. You need to keep your bulbs dry. But in a greenhouse, is That's, that really an appropriate place yeah. to store bulbs? Maybe too hot. So they're all pressed down. And then the final layer are these beautiful forget-me-nots. So these have been grown by ourselves from seed we've collected from our own plants. And I'm just going to place a few of these they're lovely plants. Lovely they're lovely. Look system. at the root system. Look Isn't at that. Beautiful? Oh, wow. I love that. So these were pricked out into these containers and now they're perfect. So I'm just going to plant a few of these on the top surface. Now these can grow quite wide, so I don't need to fill the whole container of these. Just they will spread out a little bit. But I think that's a really nice finishing touch, having these on the surface like that. I think that's yeah. really lovely. I think they'd be beautiful. And obviously that blue, when these flower, and then the other bulbs flower as well, it's going to be absolutely stunning. So I'm being careful not to disturb because Too remember much. the crocus is just below the surface well so far below the surface so Paul's trying yeah. to be as careful as possible Being as careful as I can and bulbs tend to you know even when they're on an angle so say you put a bulb in and it's it's accidentally ends up like that it's going to find its way to the surface it will find its way so I'll just five on the top like that yeah and I'm just going to top up just around the sides just to make sure there's plenty of compost I think that looks amazing. That truly is amazing work. And it, it's just nice to finish it off with some plants as well, to have something on the surface like that. Because you're waiting for these bulbs to come up, but you've got these lovely plants to look forward to and enjoy as well. I think that's beautiful. I think that's lovely. So do you want to hold that up? There we Let go. Let everybody okay. see. Sort it's beautiful out, delight, that's it. wonderful. So that's how it's going to be. I love it. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to place this underneath our potting bench so it's not going to get too much rainfall on it. We'll water it ourselves and we'll keep an eye on it. These forget-me-nots are quite happy in a, in a semi-shaded area so it's not going to do them any, any damage at all really. And it's just going to prevent them from having that, that all that time of being yeah. outdoors yeah. We've just rain and rain, rain all through rain. the autumn and all through the winter. Because we, we don't know, we can't predict what the weather's going to be like this year. No. It might be we, really dry. It might be dry. But if there was another winter like last year, and if it's the yeah. same, um, you know, there's a trend building there, maybe, perhaps, who knows. If it's going to be like last winter, then that's not good for the bulbs. And we do not want that disappointment again. Because, you know, you're looking forward to your daffodils, you're looking forward yeah. to your other bulbs. And it was just, it was, it was, it was a, heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. It was just... Because they're the first, especially, you know, your spring bulbs are the first glimmer of hope. Yeah. You see the bulbs, you see your daffodils and you think, wow. The you best know, weather hope, in the, the best weather. The better weather's on its way. Plants are on the way. Whereas last year, not yeah. happening. We did have to buy a few in, didn't we, at the We time? did, we did. Just to replace really some did. of the ones we missed. But that's the way it goes. So I'm going to place this somewhere 
where it's not going to have too much water going on it and we're going to keep it watered mm -hmm. ourselves. Now, probably maybe once a fortnight will probably be sufficient. Now, is there anything that we can do to stop our resident monkey nuts, our squirrel, coming yes. in and digging this up? Is there something that we can do? Yes. And is there something that other people could do in their gardens so, to stop that? We do have squirrels that do come and dig. As soon as you see a bare patch of soil, they're in there digging things up. And they are particularly quite um, interested in the crocus bulbs. They love crocuses for some so reason. So what we'll do with this is we'll just place loosely over the top just some metal grate and that will just stop them from wanting to dig in there. Mm. Just as they make a, make a barrier, a physical barrier, so they don't go and dig up our bulbs. And certainly, so things yeah. begin to emerge, yes. then we can remove that barrier yes. and things should be safe. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that's perfect. So that is our bulb layered pot finished. I'm going to be planting a very special type of gladioli and I'm going to be planting those in pots to begin with and then later next year we can get them into the garden. So I'm going to get on with that. Brilliant. These are a very special type of gladioli. These are called gladioli byzantina and these are a species variety and they're commonly found in the Mediterranean but they are fairly hardy so we can grow them in the UK. And we first managed to see these when we had a visit in the spring to Felly Priory. And these are just absolutely, they're just stunning. The actual flowers are like a rich, vibrant magenta. And they're just absolutely beautiful, quite delicate, very elegant, not kind of like any of the other type of gladioli, which are a bit brash. These are very, very elegant and beautiful. So what I want to do with these is eventually these are going to be planted out in the garden and I do have a space near one of our persicarias which when the spring comes is quite an open space and then as the summer comes the persicaria grows and then takes over but during that time these will be dying back because these have become dormant in the summer and then re-emerge in the spring but I can't really get to that area at the moment so I'm going to be placing these in containers first and we did this last year with our bulbs and the ones that didn't rot um, we did we did plant them in the garden when the spring came and we could see where the space was so with regards to these these are quite fairly small bulbs a bit like an acorn really a little pointy top and a flat base and using the same mix as our other pot that we've just done I've got some good compost with a lot of the perlite and that's just going to aid drainage and what I'm going to do is just place a little bit of that compost in each of these pots a little bit more and I'm looking to plant these initially in these containers and like I've said move them then out into the garden when space allows so I'm going to be planting five of these per container just giving them a little bit of breathing space around and these will grow to about between 60 and 90 centimetres tall and they flower in May to June so kind of towards the end of, of spring and they just bring a very vibrant flash of much needed colour at this time at that time of year so that's all the balls planted and then if we get some compost just to fill the rest of the container up it's quite a pleasant day to be doing this today it's dry which is a plus and it's also quite mild which is also a plus making sure that they're all firm 
a little bit more compost in there. And then I'm just going to place a label and keep them together. So I'll give them a water. I'll make sure they don't dry out, but I'm also going to make sure they're not too waterlogged either. Now this mix of compost will ensure that when we do water them, they will drain and they should be free of all that moisture being clogged up in the pots. I'm also going to place these underneath the potting bench with the pot we've just made together, just to make sure that they're not getting the worst of the wet weather. And come the spring, we're going to be having the space in the border and then I'm going to plant them out exactly where we want them. And they're going to make a really brilliant display towards the end of spring going into summer. Hello. All done. All done. Yes. Fantastic. Looking good. They're going to be really nice. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. these when they come up. Do you remember seeing them at Valley Primary? I do. They were stunning. Out of all the plants that are out during that time of year, these were, the, were so eye-catching, weren't they? And if you've never been to Folly Priory before, we do recommend it because it's yes, a great place. It yes. was one of our favourites, wasn't it? It's we used to really go there a lot. It's a beautiful garden. But we really, were nearer to it. And a really good nursery as well. So a lot of the plants you see in the garden, you can actually buy yeah. from the plant nursery. And a really nice tea room. Nice cakes and, and teas. They so, do really lovely cakes. So yeah, lots, lots to do when you get there. Yeah. So that's the end of this part of our October programme. In part two, we're going to be doing our garden tours. So Paul will be doing his vegetable bed and I will be doing the rest of the garden. So until then, please do take care. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you've not already done so. And if you have any comments, please drop them in the comments box below the video. Also, if you have any social media accounts, please share our videos with other people as we really would appreciate it. And it just helps get our message across and let other people see what we're doing in the garden. So until the next time, please do take care. Smile. You put a smile. Cheap perfume, aren't you? It's sort of a bad thing. It's awful. How did you buy it? I thought it was nice, wasn't it? Well, I won't have to buy it again. It's sort of a power in. It's horrible. Oh, I'm going to be, <coughs> be <laughs> coughing like mad. There's nothing I can't stand worse than cheap perfume. Stop wearing it, don't love. You're the one wearing it, mommy. True. Oh, it's come back, Robin's in, Robin just come. Oh, Robin's come, it's your mum come see us. She's letting us know we're alright, she's alright. Oh, bless you. Ready? Yeah. Or container, I should say. It's not a pot. Pots and containers both the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, do you have any chance to open anything here? Some of the same parts? Nothing, okay. Container. Yeah. Ready?